Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you at Hunter's Point here with another video. I do hope and pray that you all are having a good Wednesday morning so far, wherever you all are at. I do hope and pray that each of you are doing well. You know, I wanted to come on here and give you guys a news update on the digital currency front. It's been a little bit since I've you know, engaged in any sort of conversation regarding the topic of digital currency. So I wanted to come on here and report on an article that I saw the other day that I thought was interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and read from this now. This is your World News Update for the 3rd of May, 2023. This article is off of endtimeheadlines.org and will be linked in the description box below as per the usual. De-dollarization is underway, and a digital dollar must be introduced from the White House. We've heard of this concept for quite some time, and this is yet another example of the de-dollarization effort to try to transition, really, society as a whole from paper-based currencies to digital currencies. They want to make digital currencies the norm, the standard of how you pay your bills, how you shop, they want to make everything digital currency based. They want to make that really your only option of paying things. De-dollarization is already occurring, and Congress must pass new stablecoin legislation to bolster the greenback, according to Circle founder and CEO Jeremy Allaire. Circle is responsible for USD coin, the second largest stablecoin, which is a type of digital token that is typically pegged to a fiat currency, such as the greenback or other asset-like bonds. We have a situation right now where there are questions being raised about the competitiveness of the U.S. dollar. There are de-dollarization efforts that are underway in many parts of the world. According to Insider, we have a technological revolution that is taking place with blockchain technology, all air told Bloomberg TV last week. He noted efforts in the European Union, Hong Kong, Singapore, the Middle East, and other markets, warning that the United States is running behind. I'd say running behind pretty quickly. And the dollar is facing, I think, more severe threats than it ever has before. And so our view is that it's vital that Congress acts, that it acts to pass legislation that can help it remain competitive in this age of internet-based currencies, all air added quote-unquote. And that's really what I think some of these draft bills are doing that have been discussed within the House in recent days. Previously, he has shown support for a bill proposed by the U.S. House Financial Services Committee back in mid-April. It would give the Federal Reserve power over non-bank stablecoin issuers, ensuring that they are backed by dollars, notes, or treasury bills. All air told Bloomberg, that U.S. policymakers need to focus on creating an efficient framework that would introduce a digital dollar into the core economy. In his view, this would be especially beneficial at a time when global trade partners seem to be supporting a non-dollar trade regime. Though analysts say it's unlikely the greenback loses its dominance in any sort of the near future. So something that could be held with the central bank or in short duration, T-bills and other things, he said. And if you had that, and you had a way to regulate that at a federal level, that would be an ideal kind of framework for a company like Circle and for a digital currency like USDC. This is the next stage of the technological revolution known as de-dollarization. This is the next stage in the deep state's efforts to change us from a paper-based currency to a digital-based currency. And it's only a matter of time before they really start shoving this stuff in our faces more and more. This will be a forced change upon people, and if you don't conform, they will find ways to punish you. Perhaps. You might not be able to buy certain things that you like unless you choose to use a digital-based currency. 
all this stuff is obviously precursors, foreshadowings to the tribulation period. I want to make it very clear, we are not in the tribulation period. The rapture happens before the tribulation. All those who have believed on Christ alone for their salvation and eternal security will be taken out of here via the rapture, so they will not have to be here when things really start getting bad. But that time is approaching. That's why I believe it is especially now, it's more important than ever before that you make the decision to believe in Jesus Christ alone if you haven't. Because you don't want to be here when the tribulation period begins. You don't want to live through those horrible, horrible seven years. You don't want to be here for that. And the good news is, you have an out. You have an out, assuming the rapture hasn't happened if you're watching this in the future. You have a chance to believe on Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and eternal security. And that's all you have to do to be saved is believe in him. Believe that Jesus Christ alone paid your sin debt in full. To tell us I, it is finished. I'm going to go ahead and pull up eSword, which is my online digital Bible program. And we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. And it reads like this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. That right there is how you are saved if you believe that in your heart alone. Salvation's not complicated. It is simple. It is childlike simple. All you have to do is place your faith in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. I'm going to go to John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Again, three of my all-time favorite verses. It really ties in beautifully with the gospel of grace that I just read to you all. And it reads like this. Again, this is John 3, verses 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's what it comes down to, folks. is whether or not you have trusted solely in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you placing your faith in Jesus, or are you placing your faith in your good works, right? Your ability to do good works or good deeds or obey laws or follow commandments. Are you putting your faith in your performance, or are you putting your faith where it should be, and that's in Jesus Christ and what he already did for you on that cross of Calvary almost 2,000 years ago? See, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity, he died on the cross, shedding his precious, purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins, that's past, present, and future sins. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification and therefore our salvation. Right? Jesus paid our sin debt. He did it all. The only thing we have to do is believe in him to believe that he did that for us and that that alone was enough to save us. It's really that simple. Our salvation is not dependent upon our performance. It's dependent solely upon what Christ did. And he did it all. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 to close out the video here. And it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, 
lest any man should boast. We know that grace, by definition, is getting what we don't deserve, God's unmerited favor, which he has given to us as the free gift of salvation. He's offered that to us. And we accept and receive that free gift of salvation by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. It really is that simple. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. Believe that. Believe that. That is where I'm going to leave you all for this video. I will see you all in the next video message whenever it is, should the Lord Terry is coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. All right. Take care.